Hi there and welcome to lesson 6-3 part B. Our goal today is to be able to solve proportions. Let's first review what a proportion is. Recall that a proportion is two equal ratios or rates. And there are three ways in which we can solve a proportion for a missing value. We could first look at the proportion and take a peek horizontally to see if there's a relationship in the numbers. And if you look at the first example on the left, you will see that to get from 2 to 10, you simply multiply by 5. So if you do the same thing to the denominator, 6 times 5 will give you a value of 30. Let's look at the middle example. We could also look vertically, which is unit rate. To get from 2 to 6, we would be multiplying by 3. So if we do the same thing to the other side, 10 times 3 would give us a value of 30 as well. The third relationship that you can use to figure out the missing value in a proportion is cross products. The cross products of any two equal fractions will always be equal. So if 10 times 6 is 60 and 2 times x is 2x, you can set them equal to each other to form a one-step equation where you can solve and get the missing value again, the same answer is 30. So these are three ways in which we can solve a proportion. So let's first begin by taking a look at some proportions or sets of equal fractions and we're going to just determine are they a proportion or not? Are they a pair of equal fractions, equal rates or ratios? All right. So on number one, 14 to 16 and 42 to 28. Are these two proportional? So are they equal? That's kind of our question here. Well, it may not be that obvious, but there is a nice factor of change relationship between 14 and 42. If you take 42 and divide it by 14, you'll see that it's really just being tripled. 14 times 3 is 42. So let's take a look. Is that, this, is that also true for the denominator? If I take 16 and multiply it by 3, am I going to get 28? Well, 16 times 3 is 48. So mm -mm, these are not equal. They're not proportional. So I'm just going to put a no right there. All right, not equal. On number two, let's take a look at, at this, uh, well, proportion. We're going to decide if it is one or not. Well, there's not a real easy relationship between 8 and 6 or even 8 and 18, vertically, horizontally, not a real great relationship. So let's try cross products with this. Now, if, if these two are equal, the cross products should also be equal, which um, that just means we're going to multiply going across. So let's do 6 times 18. Calculator is really helpful with this. I get 108. And now I'm going to go 8 times 16. And I get 128. Well, the cross products are not equal. Therefore, these fractions are not equal because these are not equal. So we're going to say no not a proportion, okay? Let's try this one down here. For one, uh, one inch for every five miles is the same as 2.5 inches for every 12 and a half miles. So we have the first uh, ratio right here, one inch for every five miles. One inch for every five miles. So I wrote this as inches over miles. I need to be sure that my other one looks the same. Is the same as, that means equal, to 2.5 inches for every 12.5 miles. So is this true? Well, do you see a relationship vertically between 1 and 5? Yeah, to get from 1 to 5, it's just simply multiplying by 5. Well, let's see if the other side, that's also true. So I'm going to test it. On the other side, I'm going to take 2.5 and I'm going to multiply it by 5. I get 12.5. Yes these are equal. Finally, we get a yes. There we go. So three different ways of checking this. I looked at factor of change, the horizontal relationship. I looked at cross multiply, the diagonal relationship. And then for this one, I looked at the unit rate or vertical relationship. And I can check if two fractions are equal with any of these three ways. If you prefer one way, use that way every single time if you want to. Okay. Now let's get to the examples where we're going to be solving the proportion for a missing value. So we've got three different ways we can solve a proportion. Um, factor of change, unit rate, and cross multiply, right? So vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. So let's take a look at our example here. 
and see if we can find a relationship in the numbers. Well, I see a relationship vertically. To get from 1 to 3, it's times 3. I also see a relationship horizontally. To get from 3 to 45, it's times 15. I could use either of those, or I could cross multiply. Um, let's just go ahead and let's use factor of change. How many times bigger from 3 to 45? If I take 45 divided by 3, it's 15. So 3 times 15 is 45. It's always good to check that. 3 times 15, just double check your math, it's 45. So that means I, I can do the same thing to the top to produce an equal fraction. So remember, these two are just equal fractions. So 1 times 15 would just be 15. And this mixing x value, x would equal 15. So 1 third is equal to 15 45ths. And here I just use the horizontal factor of change method. Let's try number 2. All right, on 2. 2 is to 6 as 7 is to x. Do you see a relationship? Not going across, not horizontally, but what about vertically? Oh, okay. To get from 2 to 6, what do you do? Well, you times 3. Then to get from 7 to x, what do I have to do? I can also times 3. Now notice my missing value was in the denominator, so I wanted to go from the top to the bottom, so I needed to do top to bottom here as well. Well, I can triple the 7. 7 times 3 is 21, and x equals 21. So this I could just do right in my head, uh, knowing that the denominator was just triple the size of the numerator. Let's try example 3. Now with this one, do you see a relationship horizontally? Maybe not, but there is one. It's a decimal. You could take 10 divided by 4, and you can look and see how many times bigger that is. Not a real easy relationship vertically, but let's try horizontally. Let's try cross products. So we're going to go 4 times 16. Remember that calculator is super helpful. So 4 times 16 is 64. Okay, then I'm going to multiply this way. 10 times x is just 10x. Remember the number goes in front. Bring down the equal sign, because remember, the cross product should be equal. So the product of 4 and 16 is equal to the product of 10 and x. We set them equal, which gives us a one-step equation, and now we can divide. x equals 64 divided by 10. I can just hit divide by 10 in the calculator, and I get 6.4. So our missing value is 6.4 for x, and that's the method of cross products. All right, let's try when they're written uh, verbally here. We have a sentence, 5 is to x as 3 is to 30. So the extra step here is that I have to set this up as a proportion. So I've got 5 is to x as 3 is to 30. So I'm going to write this just in the order as I read it. 5 is to x, 5 is to x as 3 is to 30, 3 is to 30. That's how you read a proportion. When there's no labels, we say 5 is to x as 3 is to 30. And now we can go ahead and we can solve. So look at the look at the numbers that you have. Do you see any relationship horizontally or vertically? I always check there first. I see vertically from 3 to 30. What do I do to get from 3 to 30? Well, I times 10. To go from top to bottom, I times 10. So go from top to bottom, I can times 10. What would the value of x be? 5 times 10, x would equal 50. And I've solved it. So here I used unit rate, or the vertical relationship in fractions. Let's try the next one. See if you can set that up as a proportion. n is to 4 as 30 is to 12. n is to 4 as 30 is to 12. OK, do you see a relationship in the numbers? I see one going across, right? Well, now do you, do you notice that our missing value is on the left? So we want to get from 30 back over here to n. So we want to look at 12. How do I get from 12 to 4? Both of our arrows need to be going in the same direction. To get from 12 to 4, it's dividing by 3. So I do the same thing to the top. I divide by 3. 30 divided by 3 would give me a value of n equals 10. Okay, so here I use the vertical relationship to solve this one, and here I use the horizontal factor of change down here to solve this one. All right. Last one, number six. The ratio of blue to yellow marbles in a jar is five to eight. If there are 104 yellow marbles in the jar, how many are blue? So our question we're trying to figure out is how many of them are blue? Now notice that we were given a ratio to start with. The ratio of blue to yellow is five 
to 8. So let's start by writing the ratio down that we were given, blue to yellow. So blue to yellow. I'm just going to write that off on the side so I remember I'm putting blue on top of yellow. Blue to yellow, 5 to 8. So for every 5 blue, there are 8 yellow. Now, I'm being, I, I'm being told that if there are 104 yellow, how many would be blue? So where am I going to put the 104? Remember, yellow is in the denominator, 104. Set these equal to each other. Here's our unknown. So if we have for every five blue marbles, there are eight yellow. So how many blue would there be if there are 104 yellow? Okay, let's look at our numbers. Do you see a relationship from eight to 104? Well, it might not be that obvious, but we could try and figure out what you multiply by by dividing, by using the inverse. 104 divided by 8 is 13. So I could use factor of change. 8 times 13 gives me 104. Well then, up here, I can multiply by 13 as well. Okay. It's not that obvious to see that factor of change, but you can find it using division. So then 5 times 13 will give me 65. 65 blue marbles. You also could use cross products to solve this as well if you wanted to. That would work too. Any way you want. Remember, you have three ways that you can use. Okay, so just to review here, there are three ways to solve a proportion. I can look for a horizontal relationship, a vertical relationship, or a diagonal relationship. Thanks for joining me for this lesson today. Have a great day.